It's something to me because this is a time of refreshing. It's a time so that we can come together and worship the Lord and we can we can be strengthened uh, because of one another and because of what the Lord is doing and, and His Word that, that so uh, faithfully sustains us. We couldn't do it without the Word of God and without His, His life in us. And so we give Him all the praise and all the glory. We're going to be in Matthew, Matthew chapter 20. Um, I'm going to close out this, uh, this s- series right here this morning um, in, in our, in, you know, what it is to serve and, and how our purpose is revealed through our service. That the purpose that God has in your life and in my life, it's revealed as we serve Him by serving one another. And, and that's not always an easy thing because we have to deal with ourselves. And, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that we are a living sacrifice. You know, if we were a dead sacrifice, dead once for all, we wouldn't have to worry about anything after that. But we're a living sacrifice that is constantly, uh, every morning, myself wakes up. Every morning, my attitudes wake up. Every morning, I I have to deal with self and I have to carry my cross and take up my cross daily and follow the Lord Jesus Christ and put this sacrifice on an altar. And and that's a very real thing in your life and my life. And and you know, I, I've learned I never I, I, I have never come to the point. I always say, I, I always get to this point where I'm learning. I, I never say I've I've you know absolutely come to a, an absolute understanding because as soon as I say something like that, there goes my thinking on, on a subject. Um, but here's the thing, I'm learning along with you. And we're learning together. And, and so as we walk this walk of faith, we're going to continue to learn that the Lord Jesus Christ, He's chosen you and He desires to use you. You may sit there and think, man, I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes, but I can tell you this. God is going to teach you that you do and that, that there's a purpose in your life. And, and one thing I've, I, I've been learning along the way is that as a living sacrifice, I'll never be complete until I stand before Him one day. I'll never totally overcome anything until I stand before Him one day. Because the moment I think that I stand, the Bible tells me to be careful, lest I fall. And so, so you and I will never completely overcome anything apart from the Lord Jesus Christ and, and never get to the point to where we feel so, so, so proud that, hey, we've, we've arrived. No, listen to me. Um, we're on this journey together. And the moment you think that you can't slip and fall, I'm telling you, you'll slip and fall. But, but this is where we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's ever sustaining us. Amen. And thank God for Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 20, um, would you stand for the reading of God's Word? We're going to read one verse this morning. We've read this, uh, this passage of Scripture uh, the last few Sundays, and today we're just going to read one verse. Because, you know, Jesus, Jesus doesn't just shake up our self-centered motives and 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 just you know just to expect difficulties in our lives no he he prepares us along the way and and there's a reason for everything that he does there's a reason for every challenge that you're facing today there is a purpose today I was reading, I, I forget who it was, uh, but this past week I was, I was just, and I shared it with the, with the group on Friday as, as, during prayer right before we got started. And sometimes we ask God and we wonder why. And all of us have asked God why at some point or had a question in our heart, why? And, and I was reading one of the authors and, and, and they just said, they said, you know, God is not only all powerful. Because he can. He can heal any disease. He can move any mountain. He has the power. He has the strength. He, he, but he's, he's all wise. He's all knowing. And he knows the effects of, if I move this mountain, if I do this, what's going to happen next? 
And he also knows that that if he allows it to stay for a little while and instead of delivering you from it, delivering you through it. He also knows the effects that are going to take place in your life and what's going to happen through that and how you're going to be strengthened in the process. And so, so I love it because God is, God is so well-rounded, we don't even understand that sometimes when He, when he chooses not to, it's like the, the three Hebrew children. It, it, he can deliver us, but even if He doesn't, and I love that song by Mercy Me, because even if He doesn't and, and He chooses to leave that mountain unmovable, just like Jesus said, take this cup from me, and He said, and, and he said nevertheless you decide not to, I'm okay with it because not my will, but your will be done. I'm telling you, whatever you're facing today, God knows why you're facing it. But here's the beautiful thing. He's with you in the middle of it. And he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But verse 28 this morning, he says, even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. You see, Jesus doesn't just throw us out there and tells us and tell us, just go ahead and try to figure it out for yourself. A lot of times we think that this is exactly what God does, but it's not how God operates. Sometimes in our lives, and this, I believe, is is sometimes where the confusion comes in, because because we feel like we've been left alone to figure it out for ourselves. Right. But but when we come to serve God, the thing is, is this. That Christ has given us a perfect example and a perfect model. And that perfect example and model is Himself. That He lived in this world. And as He was in this world, so are you and I. To live after the example of Jesus Christ. But, but a lot of times what happens, and we've seen it through this story, is our own selfishness comes into play. But, but somehow we've got to come to the place where we come back to the Word of God, and this has to be crucified. You see, in servanthood, there's no place for self to serve. We can't be self-serving. We always have to be looking out for the, for the needs of others. And as we've said, that, that serving is ultimately putting our own desires and our own will aside to take on the desire and the will of someone else. And that someone else is ultimately the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought of service uh, of servanthood in these terms, but this is exactly what Jesus Christ wants out of you and me. And, and, and what is the devil trying to do every step of the way? He's trying to thwart the will of God in your life. And and I'm for some reason I keep coming back to this to this thought that Satan's final attack on you and me is to rob God of the worship and to rob us of the power of God that comes through worshiping him. And how do we worship him? Through our service. Through serving him. So he tells them, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, these these verses have been rightly regarded as, as one of the most precious sayings of Christ. Jesus is both our example and our motivation. He's both. He's our example and our motivation. Sometimes we need to, to be motivated. We need to look on Christ and look to Christ to be motivated because there, there are days where I'm just like, it's, it's like the psalmist said, have I washed my hands in vain? How long can I keep doing this? Because if we're honest with ourselves, and, and how many of us really want to get honest with ourselves because this is the only way that deliverance really comes, is when we're willing to be honest with ourselves and with God. And how many of us are honest with ourselves that we've asked the question, do I... Why do I continue? And what's the purpose for me continuing? Can I tell you, Jesus Christ is your motivation. He's your motivation today. He's he's the whole reason that we serve. It is is not because we are self-serving or merely because we are serving someone else. We are serving the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And if Jesus could do it, guess what? You and I have to do it. And so he wasn't focused on keeping his position and, and, and continually getting more as the disciples were. 
You see, we, we, we come to this place where we, we're like, okay, what's in it for me? If I serve Christ and if, I, and, and if I'm in, the service for, in this service for Christ, there's got to be something in it for me. Is there ultimately? Yes. And you can find it all through the Word of God. And as I've said at, at times, I serve and, and I'm motivated to serve because God says they that come to Him must believe that He is and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. In other words, He, he has a reward. And, and even in the book of uh, Revelation, it tells us, that he, when he comes, his reward is with him. Always telling us there is a reward in this for you and I. There is something in this for you and I. But it can't be what we seek here in this life. And sometimes we get so wrapped up in what we see that we can't look beyond to see the things that we cannot see. Having eyes to see, we, we're blind, the Bible tells us not being able to see the spiritual things because the things that are unseen, those things are the things that are, that are eternal. So Christ, even though He was here, He was focused on, He wasn't focused on keeping some kind of a position or, or gaining more authority in the physical realm, if you would. He wasn't looking or vying for position. In Philippians chapter 2, and I, and I, and I encourage you to take notes because it's, it's through, through taking notes and and going through them throughout your week, you're going to be able to apply this stuff to your life. But in Philippians chapter 2, <clears throat> the Bible tells us that Jesus left His throne in order to serve. And, and, and listen what it says. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility. Considering others better than yourselves. Each of you should, not, should, should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And, and I love this. Who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but, but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. Who being God, he, 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 didn't, he didn't think of just, just being equal with God and sitting up there on a throne somewhere. He, he wasn't looking at that because he had his eyes on something else. He had his eyes on you and me. There was a bigger prize in mind than just to rule and to reign. There was something greater in mind. I was, I was reading, I, I, I believe it was Brother Lawrence this past week, and he said, he said this was the order. God created the heavens and the earth for man, and He created man for Himself, and that's the order. You see, but we've twisted and inverted the order, and we've made earth the, the, the thing to be worshipped. And you can see it in our culture. You can see it in this day and age in the environmentalist movement and all of these things. That And Jesus even straightened the Pharisees out when He said, the Sabbath, man wasn't created for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was created for man. And here's the thing. He created the heavens and the earth for us. But He created us for Himself. So that He could gain pleasure from us. And He dwelt among us. And so he became a man just like you and I. He served the needs of others, demonstrating ultimately the act of servanthood by ultimately giving himself as a payment for our sins so that, so that you and I could be set free. This is the whole reason that he came. He came so that you and I could be set free. Free from what? Free from ourselves. Free from sin. Free from the grasp of Satan himself. Free, free, because he that the Son sets free is free indeed. And, and so, so when he sets us free, he, he sets us free so that we can continue to carry on the work of setting others free, carrying the gospel of freedom of peace. And we can't lose focus of this. It's so hard in this day and age because everything is focused on the person. But I love this, what Paul says here in Philippians, nothing out of selfish ambition. Now that's a difficult task to, to perform, isn't it? Nothing out of selfish ambition. Because after all, why do you do what you do? Because there, there's got to be something in it for me. And Christ is saying, 
there is something in it for you, but that better not be your motivation. And it can't be your motivation and my motivation. See, the, the true standard of greatness is this, that the Savior's pattern of self-sacrifice peers through. It's the Savior's pattern of self-sacrifice that has to come through. We, we, we want to we wanna see His greatness. And a lot of times, here's the thing, we want to see His greatness. And, 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 and when we think about serving God, how many of us, if, if we're honest with ourselves, no show of hands, but if I serve God, I want to see His power, right? I, I want to see Him move. I, I, I want to see mountains move. I want to see blind eyes open. I want to I want to see this and that. And, and, and it's all about that rather than looking and saying, I, I just want to find somewhere to serve. I want to I want to find a hole and fall in it. I, I want to find a place that's lacking and, and, and go to it. Dave Thomas, the founder of Wendy's, he once appeared on the cover of their annual report dressed in a knee length work apron holding a mop and a plastic bucket. And here's how he described this picture. He said, I got my MBA long before my GED at Wendy's MBA. Does not mean Masters of Business Administration. It means mop bucket attitude. Dave Thomas got his MBA from following the model of the master. Think about it. What is your mop bucket attitude? So, so here's two, who, here's two uh, theories or, or, or on the bucket theology, if you would. And, and not necessarily theories, they're, they're actually fact. You remember what Pilate did when the responsibility fell upon him and he had the chance to, to free Jesus and to acquit him of all the charges that were laid against him. In Matthew chapter 27 and verse 24, this is what it says. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. You see, Pilate was the man in charge at this time, and it was up to him to choose. And the fate of the Savior was in his hands. Well, we know that it really wasn't. Because Jesus himself told Pilate, he said, he, he says, you don't have the right to take my life or to give it to me. He says, I lay my life down and I'll take it up again. But here in this moment, Pilate had a responsibility. And he could have at that moment chosen to set Jesus free. But he saw and he felt the weight of the world and all of those that were around him. He was thinking of, of what would Caesar say because, because here the Jews were making accusations that this man claims to be a king of the Jews over Caesar himself. And it's up to you. And if you let him live, then, then what's Caesar going to do with you? But I want you to think about another opportunity that was placed upon the Lord and Savior. The night before his death, he called for a bucket and and proceeded to wash the dirty and dusty feet of his disciples. See, it all comes down to this. What is, what is your, what's your bucket theology? You see, Pilate's, Pilate's paradigm is it's alive and well today. He knew what he, had, he should have done, but, but he took the easy way out. He passed the responsibility that belonged to himself to others. This, this should have been his. And and we, we look at Pilate and we can say, oh man, that, that dirty Pilate, what in the world? Why would he ever think of, why would he do such a thing? But can I tell you this, how many times have we passed the responsibility that was ours to someone else? I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to point fingers today, but because my mama told me, she said, anytime you point a finger, you always have at least three of them pointing back at you. But if we're honest with ourselves, at some point in your life, and it's probably not the proudest moment in your life, you point it and you place that responsibility upon others. I want to read this little little uh, phrase to you, poem of sorts. Maybe it's be- because we think somebody else will do it. There's a clever young guy named somebody else. There's nothing this guy can't do. He's busy from morning till way late at night just uh, just substituting for you. 
You asked to do this. You're asked to do this. You're asked to do that. And what is your reply? Get somebody else to do that job. He'll do it much better than I. So much better to do in, in this weary old world. So much and workers so few. And somebody else, all weary and worn, is still substituting for you. Somebody else will do it. I, I, I mean, I mean if, if, if I don't do it, God, God's going to ultimately choose somebody else. There may be some truth to that, but I still believe that there are some things that no one in this world can do but you. Because there's a calling placed upon your life, and the Bible says that it is without repentance, and no one else can fulfill the calling that you can fulfill. There's a purpose for each one of us, and all of us are significant in the kingdom of heaven, but we only find our our absolute purpose when we begin to serve the Master. And when we're truly willing and ready to serve Him. You see, there's too many who have just been, been just content with, with somebody else that's going to do the job. And, and all of us have come to this place at some point in our lives. See, here's the problem with this. There aren't many people that are out there that are going to do the job that you have been called to do. See, Pilate's, Pilate's problem was... was That he wasn't willing to take the responsibility for himself. And destruction was imminent. There's an old uh, old, uh, historian, historian say that Pilate ultimately was found on an island somewhere. Washing his hands. His hands were bloodied and blistered. And he had been washing his hands for years. And, And when the person asked, they said, what are you doing? He said, he said, I'm trying to wash this blood off of my hands. But he couldn't. Because he negated the responsibility that was laid upon him one day. And he couldn't overcome the guilt that came along with it. And ultimately, you and I know that nobody else's will absolutely do it. And if you and I don't do it, somebody else will try. But it will not be done the way that God wanted it to be done. Because you negated your responsibility. You see, it led to death. But there's another choice. John 13, verse 4 and 5. See, Jesus and His disciples are, were sharing the Passover meal together when Jesus got up. And in and, and, and verses 4 and 5, the Bible says He got up from the meal. He took off His outer clothing, wrapped a towel around His waist, and after that He poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. See, Peter didn't like this responsibility. He didn't like what Jesus was doing. Here Jesus, the guest of honor, was washing the disciples' feet. Have you you ever stopped and thought about it? Just just thought, why, why would Peter get so upset? Why would Peter be upset that, that Jesus is, is washing the disciples' feet. Could it be this? That it was because Peter knew that it was, it was his responsibility and it wasn't the master's. He knew that he should have been the one washing everybody else's feet. I mean, I mean have you ever felt that way? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you shouldn't be doing that. I should be doing that. You, you ever worked for a boss that was that way? Who who? He, he may have asked somebody to do it or may have asked you to do it, and then all of a sudden you see him doing it. And it's like, wait a minute, what are you doing? What are you doing? Have you ever seen your parents in that kind of a situation and you knew that you should have been doing it? You see, Peter, Peter, Peter knew that it was his responsibility. It wasn't the master's responsibility. See, washing feet was the, was the job of the lowest slave in the house. This would have been unheard of for the guest of honor to be washing everybody else's feet. See, the roads in Jerusalem, they were covered with mud and, and, and the animals walked the same roads as the people. So feces and everything else would, would, would cover the, the feet of, of those who walked down those streets. And the, 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 the owner of the house would, would hire a servant to wash the guest's feet as they came in and 
he would just, he, that's, that's what he was hired for. But as they came in, he would take that bucket and wash their feet. And he'd wash the mire and all the other garbage off the feet. And if they, did, they were too poor and they didn't have the, the money to hire someone to do it, the first person to get there would, would take and, and, and take the job of washing the rest of those feet that, that showed up. But here Jesus comes and He takes this responsibility upon Himself. It's interesting that none of the disciples volunteered for the job. Oh, we want the good jobs, right? We want the good jobs. We want the jobs that are going to pay more. We want the jobs that are going to show us, uh, going, to, going to give us some kind of recognition. But, but nobody wants to, to do the, the other job and take up the bucket and mop and, and, and do the others. You know, it has to be done. We all know that it has to be done, but nobody wants to necessarily do it. Chuck Swindoll writes, he says, The room was filled with proud hearts and dirty feet. The disciples were willing to fight for a throne, but not for a towel. How many of us are, are, are willing to fight for position or to get our name uh, recognition, uh, to, to be seen by others so that, so that everybody can somehow look at us and think, oh man, they must be, must be important. They must be doing something right. But none of us are willing to say, hey, you know what? I'll take that job. I'll take that job. Jesus was revealing servanthood as a responsibility. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I don't have to do it. No, you don't have to. But if you're a servant, it, it's a responsibility of those who would be willing to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why the Bible tells us to take up our cross and follow Him. Be willing to be a servant. In John 13, 14, and 15, and it says, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet. You also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. You see, Jesus was, was, was it, it was one of those moments where he was basically saying to you and me, I'm not asking you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. You see, just because we come to a place and, and God uses us. See, the Bible tells us that, that when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that it is God that raises us up. And the only reason that somebody is in a position where they are is because God has placed them there. And because they have, they have humbled themselves. Now, now, there are others in positions because of other reasons, and God didn't put them there, and you wouldn't see them willing to lift a finger to do anything else. But the only reason that God has placed people in, in positions that are higher is because He can trust them to serve in the positions that are lower. And we had never better, we, we had better never get to a place where, where it's beyond us to reach down and pick up a piece of paper or to scrub a toilet or to mop a floor or to, to sweep a parking lot or to, to do whatever is necessary because the kingdom of heaven demands it of us. You see, we live in, a, in, in such a society today that, that it tells us we don't have to do any of that stuff. And it's somebody else's job. And, and you, should be, you, you should be looking out for number one. And don't worry about that. But, but Christ says, no, forget all of society. Forget of what everybody else tells you. This is what I'm telling you to do. And it is our responsibility as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ that nothing is below us. I had a good friend of mine call me even this morning. Hadn't seen him in, in some time. And, and I remember even as a youth pastor, he was, he was one of those that was in my youth group. And he called me this morning just, just sharing his heart and, and just being completely honest. And I was able just even to minister to him. And, and you know, I was, I was kind of pressed for time because I was just getting ready for church and I was outside just... I took the dogs out for a moment and, and that's when he called me. And so I'm sitting there and I said, and I, I said, you know what, even if I have to run late, I've got to, I've got to do this. And so I sat there and was able to minister to him. And he was telling me of all the things that he, he just facing right now. And I said, Jesus still loves you. He's still with you. 
He's not going to leave you now. It's actually in these moments when you're struggling, when you're fighting, that he's with you and he's going to be with you and he's going to stand right by your side. I said, the, the good thing is, is you understand where you're at. You, 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 you see what's wrong and you're willing to make it right. You see, the Bible tells us not, that when we see our brother or sister overtaken in fault, he says, consider yourself because you could be in that very position. See, we better never think more than our, more of ourselves than we ought to. And that's why we can never get to a place where, where it's beyond me to serve in, in any capacity. I, I don't care. As a pastor, if God said, you know, leave the pastor because I need you to be a janitor for me to, today or for the rest of your life, then guess what? I'll be a janitor for him for the rest of my life if that's what he wants out of me. And it can't be beyond us. It can't be beyond us. I think sometimes those, those positions are the ones that matter the most. How many of us know somebody that's in a position like that that just encourages us? They're some of the sweetest people because they don't try to think of themselves highly. They don't try to think of themselves as something. But they, but they, they take on the role of a servant and, and we see Jesus Christ in them. And I thank God for that. He set an example for you and I. And Jesus was, was showing us this is what heaven is all about. It's an emptying of ourselves. You think about it. The very minimum, Jesus is showing us that the Son of God can humble Himself and serve. And if He can do it, then we have to. Heaven was emptying itself. He didn't have to. He had a throne already. He has a kingdom. He created the heavens and the earth. We don't even realize how, how large our, the, the universe is. And he has it all to rule and to reign. And yet, for a moment in time, he stopped. And he took on the, the form of a human. And he humbled himself to the lowest, to the lowest stature in, in what we would consider our society. And he took on the role of a servant so that we could be set free, so that we could come to know him. Because if he had come just merely as a king, guess what? Most of us would have been left out. Most of us would have never been able to know because, because a king doesn't always meet the needs of its subjects and doesn't always identify with the needs of, of their subjects. But he said, no, I'll take the lowest place. And because of that, th those that were in high position couldn't understand it. Those were, who, who were in a lower position were awed and, and mesmerized. That, that Why was it that three shepherds, that the shepherds would come and see this star? Why, why did he choose shepherds to, to see and to come? And why did he choose a stable? Why did he choose the lowest of the lowest of earth that we would consider? Because he wanted to identify with you and I in our lowest state. Where are you today? You see, it's church and being a believer isn't always about always riding on the, on the, on the mountains and, and soaring up with wings as eagles. It's, it's sometimes just, 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 just making it moment to moment. Sometimes it's, it's fighting through the temptations. And sometimes it's just, it's just fighting and bearing the, the burdens it, it, it's, it's not a pretty thing a lot of the times being a true believer of Jesus Christ. And I'm not here to lie to you and tell you that everything's going to be good and everything's going to go your way. No, as, as a matter of fact, it, it may not. But Jesus said, don't give up in doing good because in due season, you're going to reap a harvest. And you're going to see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. See, the, the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve. And we have to do likewise. And so, so like the disciples, we're often filled with, with wor a worldly spirit of criticism and competition. And we're, we're always vying for position. Always trying to find the best for ourselves and, and, and maneuver things for our own gain. But, but in reality, what we really need is a good dose of humility. And nobody knows how to teach us better than than Jesus Christ Himself. I've often been brought to this 
to this place. And I remember years ago, years ago, I'd ask the question, God, why me? And, and you know the response back was, was just as simple. Why not you? You see, if it's going well, we're, we somehow think that we deserve it, that we paid our dues. But when things are going rough and we can't seem to make sense out of what's up and what's down, we begin to say why. And, and we, we may not even come out and say the question exactly, but we say, why me? And God says, why not you? Why not me? Do I think that I'm better than anyone else? Do I think that, that, that for some reason I've come to a place where I don't deserve? See, obedience means personal involvement. Obedience means getting your hands dirty. Those of you who, who, who may know me, there's times if you'd have seen me in, 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 in the store, and, and I'm sure that you see me, you'd be, and, and there's times where I, I, I walk in and I'm just, in, you know, just been working or whatever, and people say, oh, that's my pastor. And, and, and there's part of me where I just think, man, I wish I would have been better dressed. But it should be the, the thought of all of us. You see, Jesus takes off this robe that identifies him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he replaces it with the towel as a servant and uses it to dry the feet of his, of his disciples. There's no, greater, there's, there's no greater sacrifice, there's no greater service than to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to think of, of, of a king and, and we can only, because, because our uh, mental capabilities, that, that, that we can only think of earthly kings. But could you imagine the king stepping down from his throne to wash the feet of, of his subjects? And yet the king of kings and lord of lords. And one, of you, one day you and I are going to stand before him. And we're going to see a throne unlike we've ever seen before in our lives. We're going to see angels uh, tear upon tear surrounding the throne and saints and in glory and, 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 and we're going to think he left that to do this and yet we think for some reason we're too good no. can I tell you this the only way that he's going to build his church is through those who are willing to take the lowest seat those who are willing to give Everything. Obedience. It's personal and personal involvement. See, we can't serve from a distance where we can't get close enough to get involved. See, sometimes we don't want to serve because because we're afraid to get hurt. Well, well, I've been there before, Pastor, and I'm and I've been hurt. Can I tell you this? I've been hurt many times. More times than I would like to remember. But every time, every time I go back. I have, to, I have to give that to Jesus Christ because I can't allow a wall to be built up. And I have to make myself vulnerable again and again and again. And when somebody hurts you and when somebody does something to you, well, pastor, you don't understand. Trust me, I know good and well. And yet I have to, t I have to give that to the Lord Jesus Christ knowing that, that you know what, I may get hurt again, but, but guess what? Jesus told me to get involved. And he told me to, to, that, that this is going to hurt sometimes. It's going to hurt you and it's going to cut deeply. But, but never, be, never be afraid to be hurt because, because you know the healer. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we, wanna, we always want to pass it on to someone else. And, and, and there's a time, and I, and I love the fact that we were able to give to our missionaries. And I think this is one of the greatest parts of our service because we can't be there many times. But there are many times when we can be somewhere and we refuse to because it costs too much. It's going to take something from us. We don't like that. And there's a price to be paid in servanthood. We have to get involved personally. 
But pastor, I, I can tell you this. You'll come up with a thousand excuses why you can't serve. I, I know this even, even in, 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 you know, personal account. And how many of us have, have ever tried to discipline ourselves? Whether it be to, 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 to exercise and to eat right. We can find a thousand excuses why we shouldn't put those running shoes on, right? We wake up on time and, and yet we, we, we see that bed, it looks more comfortable than when we laid in in the, big, in the first place. We look at those tennis shoes and, and just to lace them up, man, it seems like we're going to have to build the Great Wall of China all over again. And just to, just to do anything that early in the morning, it seems like a, an absolute impossibility that stands there. And we're not willing to sacrifice. When, when we know that there's a need in the house of God or in the family of somebody else, we know that it's going to cost us something and we say somebody else will do it. And God say, no, I'm not looking for somebody else. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. I need you to do it. I need you to step in. You are my hands. You are my feet. You, you are. And I need you today. Can you imagine rejecting the king? I often think because uh, I, the, the greatest earthly king I believe that ever that ever walked the, the face of the earth besides Jesus Christ, the earthly king, I said, is, is David. And, and, and you know, when I read through through uh, first, second Samuel, first, second Chronicles and, and first, second Kings and, and you read of David and. And you read of his mighty men, and you read, man, and, and if you're like me, you start getting these mental pictures. And, and oftentimes I, I picture myself walking in and seeing David on his throne. And, 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 and if David was to say, you know what, we're having something over here, there's a problem, I need you to go. You, you and I would be like, point me in the direction. We're, we're there. And yet the king of kings says, I need you to serve. And we're just like, too tired today. You know, there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other people that'll do it. There's a lot of other women that'll do it. There's a lot of other men that'll do it. I don't, I don't want the responsibility, but Jesus is telling you and I, we have to take on and get personally involved. And he speaks this to us in John 13 and 17. He tells us this. He tells us that if we, if we do these things, we'll be blessed in the final analysis and and leading up to everything else. See, happiness comes from doing things that serve that servants do. It, it, it helps manage our manage our motives. It, it gets us ready for difficulties. It, it helps us to put others first. Because following Jesus Christ and his example is a great task. But happiness only comes from, from being a servant. And truly serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And it'll prepare us for everything that, that he has for us. See, Peter never forgot this. He never forgot this, that Jesus took off this, his outer garment and replaced it with a towel. He never forgot the, the, this thing. And in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, this is what he says, All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. First Peter 5.5 5. See, he, he never forgot how, how Jesus would take off his robe and put on a towel and, and willing to be a servant. Are you willing to serve today? Are you willing? D.L. Moody once said, We may easily be too big for God to use, but never too small. We may easily be too big for God to use, but never too small. I, I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to the place where I think of myself more than I ought. Peter had learned his lesson on pride. He learned his lesson on humility. See, Pilate used his bucket to avoid rightful responsibility. But Jesus takes his bucket and he takes the responsibility that wasn't even his own. And he takes it upon himself. See, if we call ourselves Christ followers, then we shouldn't be looking for ways to wash our hands, but instead we should be, we should be looking for ways to get them dirty. I, I, could it be that there's a, there's a tone or a ring through the Gospels 
when Jesus says, when they accused him of, of eating with unwashed hands, when he says, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what are, what are we waiting for today? What are you and I waiting for? There's a little story after lightning struck an old shed, a farmer was relieved because now he didn't have to tear it down. The rain cleaned off his car and that saved him from, from having to wash it. When asked what he was going to do now, he replied, I'm waiting for an earthquake to shake the potatoes out of the ground. We, get, we, we wait for God to do something great. We wait for God to, to do something so powerful. And, and sometimes that's, that's, that's what we do with our lives. We spend all our lives waiting instead of doing it. When's God going to rend the heavens and, and come down? When, when is it going to be like Isaiah? And, 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 and in the year King Uzziah died, I saw him high and lifted up and his, rain, and his train filled the temple. What about Elijah when he's sitting on the mountain and he says, he says I saw the earthquake and I saw the fire and I, and I, and I saw the... The, the, the storm, I saw all of it. And he says, but God wasn't in any of it. He was in the still, small voice. And sometimes I think we're waiting for something and God's saying, I'm waiting for you to act. You see, it's not all in the glitz and glamour. It's not all in the, in the man, what's in it for me mentality. It's, it's not always like, okay, you know what, God? I want to see a sign. What did Jesus tell that, that perverse generation? He said, there will be no sign given. But that of Jonah. As he was in the belly of the whale three days, so the Son of Man will be in the tomb in the earth for three days. In other words, by the time your sign comes, it will be done. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for confirmation. You don't need a confirmation. You know what you need to do. The Bible says to know to do good and not to do it is sin. And I believe many times we just wait. We just wait because waiting is an excuse. We don't want to do it because the moment we do it, we know we're going to have to commit to it. We don't want to commit to anything because we don't want to be tied down. What if, what if they ask me to work on weekends? Oh, man, I don't want to work on weekends. What if it takes a little time away from my family? What if it costs me something? What if I don't get to do the things that I, that I really, really love to do? Can I tell you this? I'm sure the disciples, there were moments in their life where there were... There were they just wanted to do some of the things that they wanted to do, but they knew that they had to serve. How about us? What is it? What's the excuse that, that, we're, that we're putting putting up before God? See, if we want to become servants, we, we can't just wait for something to happen. Jesus said we're blessed when we do something. So I want you, I, I, I want to just give you just four things that you can do just to begin serving. Four things. Serve whenever you can. Serve whenever you can. Whenever the opportunity arises, serve. You mean I don't have to have an official position or title? No, just serve. You see something out of place? Put it in place, fix it. You see something, you see something that needs fixing, and, and God has given you a talent to fix it, fix it. See, nobody, not, not everybody's given the ability to, to work with their hands, but you are. Not everybody's given the ability for hospitality, but you are. Not everybody's given the ability to cook, but you are. 
and 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 don't get jealous of somebody else's ability because chances are they don't have the same abilities you have and Jesus Christ made it that way because because we don't all need to be good at everything at everything or or the same thing so so serve whenever you can whenever when's the right time pastor i mean summer winter fall morning noon all of them all of the above anytime the opportunity arises second serve wherever you can wherever wherever what you mean not only in church no Serve in your home. When's the last time you did something without your wife asking you to do it? When's the last time you did something without your parents telling you to do it? When's the last time you did, you've done something without your boss telling you to do it? When's the last time you've gone above and beyond your, your call of duty and done something that was beyond you? Wherever. You, you mean I, I can serve? Yeah. Wherever. Doesn't have to be only in church. Church should only be the result because because this is what happens in your life all week long. And then you come to the house of God and say, "Man, I, I I'm I'm glad to serve in the house of God. I get to serve in the house of God." But can I tell you this? You get to serve in your family. You get to serve in your workplace. You get to serve. This isn't a disgrace. This isn't somehow lowering your your standards. No. If anything, God sees it. As, as, as you are you are rising up in His. The Bible says, humble yourself and He'll raise you up. Wherever. Whenever. Wherever. Third, serve whoever is in need. Whoever. But they have more money than me, Pastor. Yeah. But they have something. You have something they don't. You may have an ability that they don't. You may have Jesus Christ and they don't. You're saying God is looking for an opportunity that through your service, He can reveal your purpose. See, we may miss it. We may pass it right by because we're not willing to stop and serve someone who ever is in need serve. And you know what? You might see the need and say, say, you know what? I, I see the need, but that's not my gifting. You know what? Try it. And if you, and, and if you, and if you don't succeed, let somebody else know that that, that does have that gifting. Because maybe, maybe in, in, now don't become the professional in pointing people where to <laughs> use their gifts, unless that's a gift that God has given you. But, but serve whenever, wherever, whoever. And here's, here's I, I believe, probably the most important. Be willing to do whatever it takes. And I, I'm not saying put yourself at risk and put yourself in danger. But there are times when the Spirit of God will grab a hold of your heart. And this is why it's so important to be led by the Spirit. But there are times where I've seen somebody on the side of the road. And I'm not saying pull over for every person that's on the side of the road. Because you never know the intentions. But if it's truly of God and you see somebody on the side of the road. And you know that you can help them. And you see them in need. Then, then, then my goodness. I, there's times where I've pulled over. And, and a lot of times it'll be, it'll be as, you know. When my family's not with me because I don't want to put them in danger. But unless the Lord tells me, yes, do it. And they've, they've been with me. You see somebody out there and they're, they're trying to push their car to the corner. You know what? Don't just drive by. Pull over behind them. Put your car in park. Get out of your car and begin to push and help them push. No big deal. Change the tire if it needs to be done. Be willing to do whatever it takes. But you don't know, Pastor. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way somewhere. And it's going to take away from. If, if we do this, then we're going to, we're going to miss our, our family time. And if we, if we go and we serve here, then, then we're not going to get to go to the island uh, this weekend. And, and maybe it's, we're just going to show up late. And I don't really want to show up late because everybody's already there waiting for me. God's saying, whatever it takes. 
But if I stop and do this, then I'm probably going to have to pay for it. Hey, if God's blessed you, then you can pay for it. Pay for it. Don't expect anything in return. Do whatever it takes. Why? Because, because you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who you're doing it for ultimately. God, I'm doing it because you asked me to do it. And because you love them, I love them. And because this is what you would do, I'm going to do this. No matter what it takes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to serve whenever, wherever, whoever, no matter what, it, what the cost. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. See? We need to be willing. We need to be willing to put ourselves out there. And not be selfish, but willing to sacrifice ourselves for the needs of others. I'm going to close with just a, a few helpful points from Richard Foster in his book called The, the Celebration of, of Discipline. He says this, The Celebration of Discipline. Self-righteous service comes through human effort. True service comes from the whispering promptings of Christ. Self-righteous service is in, impressed with the big deal. True service finds, it's almost, find it, finds it almost impossible to disguise the small or to distinguish the small from the large. Self-righteous service requires external rewards. True service rests in hiddenness. Self-righteous service picks and chooses whom to serve. True service is indiscriminate in its ministry. Self-righteous service is affected by moods and whims. True service ministers simply and faithfully because there's a need. Self-righteous service is temporary. True service is a lifestyle. Self-righteous service fractures community. True service builds community. Think about it. That when you're in the midst of serving, whatever it is, and you know, you, it, 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 can, it can happen to anybody. But if you're there in your service and, and your service is having a negative effect on the rest of those that are around, then, then maybe what you have to do is step back and, and say, you know what, maybe I'm approaching this the wrong way. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Maybe, maybe I want this too much. Even though it might be the right thing, it might be the wrong way that I'm going about it. I just want to serve faithfully. Whatever the Lord asks me to do. If He asks me to stand up, I'll stand up. If He asks me to sit down, I'll sit down. Because I want to build community. I want to build a brothership. I don't want to have the temporary things and satisfaction of this world and lose out on the eternal. You know, we have to have that eternal mindset. Forgetting those things that are behind. Pressing on toward those things which are ahead. We, we have to be looking to, to Christ, the author, perfecter of our faith, every moment and serve Him.